Mark Smelly Bell here. Welcome to Smelly's Kitchen. I'm here with my brother. Hey, Chris Bell. Hey, Bor, why don't you uh, help me chop these up? Here's a pair of scissors. This is the way we do it around here. This is kebab meat from a company called Certified Piedmontese. Freaking amazing. What's the uh, big advantage of having some Piedmontese steak, Bor? Piedmontese steak is, first of all, it's more tender. It's about as tender as any prime steak that you're gonna get, which is a great feature. But it's also really low in fat because the breed itself is actually like a really lean cattle. Jacked cows. Um, if you guys saw bigger, stronger, faster, there's these cows of Belgian blues and they have what? a lack of the gene called myostatin, which allows them to build muscle and burn fat. It's something that uh, bodybuilders are trying to get their hands on all the time, is a, a myostatin inhibitor. So we're just chopping this stuff up small. One of the reasons why I like doing this is that I don't need to use a, uh, a knife when I sit down. The other reason why I really like this is that once this is cooked up, it's gonna be ready to be eaten right away. And one of the greatest benefits of it is you get to put seasoning on every little morsel of meat that you get. There's another little added thing that you're probably not thinking about, but it's, it goes along with the seasoning, is you also get to sear every side of it because it, it rolls around in the pan it's not a lot of cooking. It doesn't take very long. It doesn't take as long. It's nice and rare inside, and then it's like seared on the outside, which uh, keeps all the juices inside. You just need to get yourself a pair of good uh, you know, like cooking shears. I got these off of Amazon. Maybe we can Kitchen Aid. It's called. So there, yeah. There's also a company called Faberware. I think they make like, you know, they make knives and different things, and they have really good shears for meat. Look how good that looks. That looks great. It's all like kind of bite size, you know? Yeah, you chop it up as small as you'd like. For me, I, I like to make them like little morsels. And when you do when you do a diet that's primarily meat-based and you eat as often as we do, this might look like insanity to some people. Like, what the hell are you guys doing with this meat? <laughs> um, but when you eat meat several times a day, two, three, four times a day, uh, I think that this is important, kind of an important step. Uh, Bork, why don't you hit it up with some seasoning, either the salt or the seasoned salt, whatever one you want to do. A, I think there's a seasoned salt, Himalayan. Yeah, and then that's just really good. Kind of just lightly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want too much, you just you just yep. cover it, because you don't want too Perfect. much. Perfect. And build. give a little, little, little bit of salt. And now, uh, we're just gonna go like this. Yeah, right onto that. There we go. And the crowd goes crazy. Everyone's cheering. Sounds like uh, Tech Mobile. Uh, what's the game where the crowd? Uh, some game where the crowd cheers. Or it's like dial up internet service. If anybody ever. And the pan is hot because we are cooking up this. This is amazing. This is bacon and beef combo from a company called White Oaks. White Oaks Pastures. I got this on the internet. But what makes this great is this, this color of this, is this color because it's real fatty. So sometimes the redder something is, like those guys over there, sometimes the leaner that it is. I smell process already cooked up. Yeah, it's getting close to being done. And then here it just goes in like that. Bam! This is a little bit of uh, the stats on epic uh, bone broth. It's got like 10 grams of protein and I think hardly any fat. Too. It's really just. It's mainly protein. It smells good. This one here is a uh, beef jalapeno, so it's got a little bit of a, a kick to it. Bone broth, something that's great. You can sip it all day long. You know, you can have bone broth pretty much all day long uh, on a carnivore diet. All right, right, over here, the bacon and beef. We're gonna add pork panko. Porking good, this is porking good. I'm trying to tell you this is porking good. Uh, this one is Italian style. So I'm gonna mush this up like this. Give it a mishmash. The pork rinds work like breadcrumbs. They were just like breadcrumbs. You can make meatloaf with them. Grab that metal thing over there and uh, give these, give this meat a little bit of a shift around. 
There you go. Don't worry about the casualty. Well, no, no steak left behind. So that meat is pretty much good to go. Keep in mind with Smelly's Kitchen, one of the things that makes it great is that there's no rules. When you're cooking for yourself, you're cooking to your own taste buds. So you don't need to have, you don't need to adhere to everybody else's rules. Follow what you know is going to be good and taste good for you. It also is our belief, we're big fans of people cooking their own meals and uh, gaining agency and strength over the food that you put in your body. And many people are just kind of ordering stuff off of DoorDash and doing things like that. And I know that you can still make some healthy choices that way and sometimes it's convenient, but let's kind of face it, we're probably messing up when we're doing that. We're probably over consuming calories. It's our mission to teach people a bunch of different ways on how they can get through each and every day without over consuming calories and over consuming energy. And a great way to do it is to pour a lot of your time and energy into cooking protein. We eat uh, all different kinds of meat. We eat a lot of eggs and some bone broth. Another key factor here with uh, any sort of nutrition is making sure that you really enjoy your meals. Do you have, ever have any meals that you're like, oh, I don't want to eat this? Every single meal is absolutely delicious. It's almost like one meal is better than the next. Mm. Sometimes I get stuck on a meal like three times in a row. It's so good. You want to just keep making it. Because you love it. Yeah, you get stuck on it. So, Boar's going to add some of that. I got stuck on chocolates for like Be a little weeks. generous with that, but don't go too crazy. Kind of maybe that way a little bit. Uh, it's a little, a little clumpy here. Uh, right? so, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. We'll just poke it around. You know what? This company needs to make a shaker. Pork they do. Like a little shaker. I think they do, yep. Yeah. They have smaller ones you can put on your table. Oh, that's perfect then. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Or more? Yeah, maybe even a little bit more over here. Uh, make a meatloaf. Wow. Our style of, kind of carnivore dieting, Bell Brothers Carnivore Diet, is very simple. We don't care if you have some vegetables. We don't care if you have some fruit. We don't care if you have some coffee. We don't care about some of these things. What we care about is that you try to replace a lot of the foods that you used to eat with meat and that you do it for a period of time. Because it's World Carnivore Month, this is a challenge. And so the challenge is a little bit different than a normal meat-based diet. When you're in a challenge, you wanna be as challenging as possible. So we want you to gravitate towards meat as much as you can with a lot less ingredients and a lot less other crap. However, you can throw hot sauce on stuff. You can use mustard, you can use ketchups. Just look for stuff that's low sugar and those kinds of things and you're gonna have amazing success. All you have to do is lean a lot towards eating a lot of protein that will drive your hunger down. That's how the carnivore diet works. All right, yeah. just dump this in there. Just a little Parmesan mm. cheese. We don't really yeah, need hard, a lot. Um, yeah, the harder cheeses have really like hardly any lactose. You, you didn't end up eating a whole package in one day is the problem. And then you end up having like a thousand calories in cheese um, that maybe you didn't need. Just try to scap all this up. Yeah, just go ahead and dump, dump them in the bowls. Dump this in the bowl? Yeah. ration it out basically. Mm -hmm. I like to encourage people to also try to take it as a challenge to not really try to consume a lot of calories while you're cooking. I know some people will like they're cook they'll cook for their kids and they're nitpicking at their kids food and they'll also when they're cooking their own food they'll also be snacking. I'm not a big fan of snacks not a big believer in them and I think that we should go meals at meals as much as we can. However it's nice to have a snack here and there, isn't it? It's like nice at night to have a snack, have a protein shake, those kinds of things. I think those kinds of things can be done, but it needs to be very specific. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a second. These are uh, pork rinds, which usually aren't that good, but these pork and good pork rinds have good flavors. Like this is a white cheddar. They make salt and vinegar. They make, what was the other flavor? Oh, they, they, make, they make a lot Nacho of cheese. So this here, is carnivore crisps and this one here is beef brisket this is going to be amazing you go one, and i just here's what i do usually every night after dinner a little while after dinner i go bam i pour this out in a bowl because i absolutely hate these things those are the worst but you need who them is the guy that made those he's 
It must be a billionaire. I bet you it's a conspiracy though. Here's uh, pork. I know, it's in everything. It's like your t-shirts have them. Yeah, so do they, but is somebody making big money off that? Like they made a law, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's not even doing anything. Probably like some sort of chip that's recording us right now. So I'm gonna dump that in there too. Got the pork and the beef together. Ah, oh, there's the thing. Yep, there it is again. They, they should put, at least put a toy surprise in there. So there's like pretty good, too. pretty good salt content in here, but I usually, I kind of like things a little salty, so I usually go but these things are, um, they're crispy. And they're amazing. Sometimes people think, this is actually my favorite one, called Eye of Round. Chicken breast, I don't like chicken breast, but some people like this one a lot too. I like to do everything with a spoon. So I eat my meat with a spoon, and I'll even eat my steak with a spoon because it's all chopped up. Because you're, cause you're weird? Kind of the always way I go. And this is amazing. Let's see. This beef and bacon blend might be the best thing ever made. Mm-hmm. How do we get it on a national level? <laughs> We're doing it right now. You're on Smelly's Kitchen, boy. Yep. I gotta get it out there to the masses. This is really, really good. Um, because I put the Italian stuff on it, the pork panko, it uh, it has almost like somewhere like between a meatball and uh, um, and because there's bacon and ground beef together, like a meatball meatloaf yeah. thing, right? Let's discuss the macros here though. This is not that high in fat. So people might be watching this going like, oh my God, they're eating so much food. Those carnivore crisps have like four grams of fat, but they have like right. 20 grams of protein. This um, meat right here has like 25 grams of protein, like five grams of fat or something per serving. And then this is probably a fat bomb, but it's probably about one to one ratio or maybe, you know, Probably not too crazy. It's not too crazy of fat to protein. I'm gonna switch over exactly to uh, trying out some of the steak. And then bone broth has, yeah. bone broth is all protein with like no fat in it. So this isn't like a super, super high fat meal. Right. Plus, again, you know, keep in mind be, because we eat because we eat so much protein that we'll go hours every day without eating, even if we're not trying to intentionally fast. You end up with some like inadvertent fasting, even if you ate at 8 a.m. and you had some eggs and some steak, you're probably good till at least one o'clock or something like that. And then you know, for me. For me, it's I would eat at like eight, and then I wouldn't eat again till like four, and then I might eat one more time at like six, and then I'm done. What about price? You know, people, we get a lot of complaining about price, but I, I mean, I think I some was gonna bring it over here just to make Andy mad. I was gonna bring over one of those um, twenty dollar tubes from, mm -hmm. <laughs> from Walmart. <laughs> it's like she thinks it's gross, but that giant tube of beef, it's like huge, right? It's it twenty is. bucks. You could take that. You could grind up your own bacon and make something as delicious as this and be really easy. This is actually from a really high quality, good farm, but all these big companies, Walmart, Probably Costco, whatever, they all have pretty good meat. They don't have bad quality meat. Right. Because they, they do so much bulk. So people think that bulk is bad. Bulk is actually good. The companies that do big numbers in beef and big Ooh. numbers in bulk, they get good quality stuff. Yeah. Everything came out really, really good. And look who's super excited about Carnivore Month. These two little puppy dogs down here. This guy right here, this company, the pork and good stuff that we got, they're amazing. This one's like, it's like having popcorn. We think it's uh, meat has some healing powers and is, uh, you know, kind of almost like a superfood. I know people are weird about that word, but I believe it's not only eating meat that is fantastic and helps people a lot, but it is, it is the avoidance of a lot of processed food, so. I think the word superfood for meat is fine. I think it's ridiculous when you're talking about most vegetables mm -hmm. that people call, you know, kale a superfood, but it, it pales in comparison to the amount of nutrients and the absorbability of the nutrients that you can get from meat. Right. So in a way, meat is the superfood, like the meats are the superfoods. Any other stuff is like, ah, you might get a little nutrients out of that here and there, it's okay, but. It's not necessarily going to be nearly as nutrient dense and absorbable as the stuff that comes from the meat. 
I showed you guys how to cook up some delicious stuff while on the carnivore diet. Showed you my favorite snacks, the carnivore crisps, the parking good chicharrones, and showed you how to cook up some steak. I made a bacon and hamburger. Um, I don't even know what we'd call that. No, that was amazing. I actually think if we threw Parmesan in there and stuff, but I think if we threw a little mozzarella and threw in some pepperoni, it would taste that like would pizza. be like a deconstructed pizza with no carbs. Everything's tasting good. We're gonna get our fill. Strength's never weakness, weakness never strength. Catch you guys later.